Good evening, welcome back to the channel. Tonight I am uh, joined by Sean again and uh, I want to focus on photographing the stars at 50 millimeters. And I'm only going to do it with, I think, the cheapest lens ever made. So let's go. <laughs> So it's not uh, fully astro dark yet, so uh, we're first going to shoot some foregrounds. I've checked uh, where the Milky Way uh, would be and uh, yeah, that means I have to walk in uh, into the dunes a bit and I will have to walk a bit further away from my subject of course because I'm shooting at 50 millimeters. So uh, let's see if we can find a composition. I'm hoping to shoot the core but also the north region of the Milky Way. So uh, really looking forward to this. It's a beautiful clear night. So. Uh, Shooting uh, foregrounds here with the 50 millimeters. Uh, the Milky Way is already beautifully visible above us. We can see all the way to Cassiopeia, to Cygnus. We've seen shooting stars, super dark location. And uh, I kind of maybe convinced Sean also to shoot on 50 millimeters. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Have you ever shoot on longer, uh, longer focal lengths for wide angle uh, landscape? Or? Not for uh, Milky Way, uh, no. no I, I Only for deep sky work? Yeah, deep sky, uh, 135 and uh, yeah, more okay. uh, millimeters. But uh, I never shot the Milky Way with 50, so it's uh, new for me, but uh, I, have a, I have them with me, so... Curious uh, yeah. how it yeah. turns out. What uh, lens is it exactly you're uh, shooting with? Nikon 50 1.8. Okay, and you're yeah. shooting at f4, I think? Uh, around f4. Get yes. a, bit, a bit more sharpness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's see how that goes. Yeah. So far, so good. While we fiddle around a bit more to shoot a nice and realistic foreground composition, let me tell you a bit more about this super cheap lens I'm using. I told you I was going to shoot the Milky Way with maybe one of the cheapest lenses ever made. And I'm shooting today with the uh, Canon uh, EF 1.8 50mm lens. It's also called uh, by us the Plastic Fantastic lens or uh, yeah, the Nifty 50 as it's uh, called. But yeah, for 130 euro it almost feels like a sort of toy lens. But it's far more, it's, it's far better than that. It's more than just a toy. Um, yeah, it isn't perfect. I've shot a couple of times before with it and the stars, uh, especially around the corners, aren't super sharp. But you know, at this price point, it doesn't really matter. But if you stop it down a little uh, to F4, for example, and it's no problem because I'm tracking 90% of the time. Uh, yeah, the stars uh, turn out to be pretty acceptable and I've got some good results with it already. Although those were all results from a Bortle 2 or a Bortle 3 sky, today we're shooting in a Bortle 4 and we're shooting also south, so that means we're shooting into well, a box. <laughs> so that uh, means we are shooting into uh, what's called the Randstad in the Netherlands. Uh, we're shooting to Amsterdam, etc. So yeah, we'll see um, what we can make of that. Uh, later this evening, the Milky Way will uh, go a bit more to the west, so it will be more over sea. And uh, yeah. I'll uh, start tracking a bit more uh, later on this evening and uh, see how this lens performs tonight. We finished our foregrounds and astro darkness kicked in. Time to set up the star trackers. So, our first stacks are running. I'm shooting at uh, ISO 1600 f4 and uh, exposure times of 30 seconds. That's a bit less than I normally shoot, but uh, as I said, we have yeah, kind of a lot of light pollution there uh, to the south. Um, the results are pleasantly surprising and also a bit disappointing, both at the same time. Uh, as the Milky Way moves more to the, I would say to the right, but more to the west, it gets more and more over sea and we get a lot of detail there. But in the light pollution, it's not super good, but yeah, still, I think we can uh, get quite a lot out of this shot. Um, yeah, Sean, what are you? Uh, how are your results? Yeah, uh, yeah pleasantly surprised. What also? You said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Uh, yeah, what you said, uh, light pollution on the, the left side, the left side of the frame yeah. are a little bit bad. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the, you see the Milky Way in, uh, in every nebula in the Milky yeah. Way. It's, yeah, it's really good. 
Nice, yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah, so we uh, will go on because Corne just called us. He's also coming along and he said, uh, how are the clouds there? Because clouds seem to be forming. Yeah. We haven't seen them yet, but uh, yeah, you never oh, know. A little bit on the horizon uh, just now. Uh... Just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> okay, but let's go. <laughs> Corné just arrived and uh, he also brought with him the clouds, <laughs> but uh, they were in his bag, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah, still there are uh, not a lot of clouds, but they are moving through the frame, but uh, yeah, we'll stack them out and otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll have a bit less uh, data to work with, not an issue. Um, what is a bit challenging though is uh, we are looking uh, exactly to Schiphol, Schiphol Airport and there are a lot of airplanes with their landing lights, how do you call them, with bright landing lights on uh, which are ruining uh, about half of our frames. So we'll just have to shoot two times as much. <laughs> Having to spend twice as much time under the stars isn't that much of a problem though, is it? So we are looking uh, to the Pleiades rising uh, above a dike. Um, Corne uh, seems to have a brilliant idea. Can you tell us what you are? Uh... I'm going to, the, yeah, the Pleiades are exactly above the June rising right now. Uh -huh. So I want to make some kind of deepscape um, with the Pleiades and me or something on the dunes in front. It's a pretty cool idea. And you're shooting with the one out of 35 millimeters now, yes, right? Yes, I just put it on the camera, yes. Brilliant. I'm framing right now, but there, yeah, the Pleiades are still a bit low, so I need to need to wait a little wait bit, a maybe. Little bit thing, yeah. Curious how it will turn out. It looks pretty cool uh, with the naked eye. So uh, let's see what the one on the 35 does. Okay, I'm now walking onto the dike and uh, I'm stealing Corne's composition. Corne has gone home, so he doesn't know. Actually, he does know. Um, yeah, here's a 135 millimeter uh, deepscape ID filled. And that's because um, uh, it was moving too much uh, because the wind is too hard. Uh, I'm trying uh, his ID at 50 millimeters. So uh, uh, Sean is down uh, at my camera and he's uh, trying to guide me uh, where I should stand. Um, Pleiades was just rising above the dike. I've made a stack of uh, about 20 shots. And my idea was, uh, if I stand there and just touch the Pleiades, it would be pretty cool. There's also um, uh, Jupiter in the frame, so um, yeah, let's see how this comes out. And uh, if Sean can guide me, I think he can. <laughs> So we are packing up right now. Uh, the last shot on the dike with me touching the Pleiades worked pretty well uh, in cooperation with uh, Sean. Yes. <laughs> we had to shorten the exposures a bit to five seconds, but I am able to stand still for five seconds. So uh, what do you think of the night? A good one? Uh, yes, very good one. Yeah. I think I got uh, two shots, one of 50 yeah, millimeter, 50. one of 24, and I just got a 15 millimeter uh, just right above us. Yeah. Of the Milky Way. Right in the zenith. It's, yeah. it, it's really cool here. We were just talking. Uh, we live in a totally wrong place uh, in the world for this hobby because the Netherlands are one of the most light polluted countries, but still, there are some small spots if you look up. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I think the uh, 50 millimeter shots uh, with the uh, cheapy lens I uh, tried uh, worked also pretty well. Let's uh, yeah, let's see uh, at home uh, back at the computer, and uh, if it turned out uh, well, uh, here are the shots. And most often here are indeed the shots because they turn out pretty well. So um, <laughs> thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. Bye bye.